coming at you live from America's podcast studio, Eric the Turf Teacher Jones. The landscape contractor and green industry platform for success. This is the Podscape, brought to you by LMN Software. And welcome everyone here to the Podscape. On today's episode, we are interviewing Stanley the Dirt Monkey Genedek, and we are going to hype up the GIE and what we need to do to have a great work-life balance. Before we get started today, I want to give a big shout out to LMN Software because none of this would be possible without them. I've personally been using their software in my own company, and so far it's been a complete game changer for my business. LMN is the most comprehensive landscape business management software in the industry. From budgeting, estimating, CRM, time tracking, and so much more, it's a simple do-it tool for your landscape business and provides a platform to scale your company to the next level. And the best part about LMN is they have a free version, which you can begin using today if you choose to. Just visit golmn.com forward slash free to learn more and start taking advantage of the software that's helped me grow my business into a successful, sustainable, and profitable company. That's golmn.com dot com forward slash free g o l m n dot com forward slash free eric the turf teacher jones oh, yeah. teaching you life lessons business strategies and leadership let's grow together what's going on What's going on, Mr. Dirt Monkey? How are you doing, Eric? Remarkably outstanding, man. Good to have you back on the show, man. It's it's been a, it's been a little bit. It has been a little bit. It has. Life been treating you well? It has, man. I see that you are busier than ever. Always, always, man. Complacency just it just doesn't allow. It just doesn't happen in my world. You got to go, go, go. And we got the GIE coming up, 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 which is going to be amazing, right? It is going to be amazing. And just, you know, I am so thankful that they are having it. Thank goodness that uh, uh, the pandemic has not, you know, prevented it from happening again this year. The only sad thing is, is a lot of our, you know, friends across the border, across the, the water, they're not going to be able to make it this year because of uh, their their country's restrictions. So, uh, we will miss a few people, but it's good to to be back in Louisville here in the next couple of weeks. You know, I've been to a couple of events and they're just not the same ever really? since this whole thing is has hit. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like crickets at a lot of these places where wow. it was just crowded and it was wall to wall people. Now it's like, I got room to breathe. There's nothing wrong with that, but what's going to happen is you when guys go to these shows, they're going to see less and less because the people that I usually typically put on the, you know, attend the events, like the, the companies they're pulling yeah. out. There's a they're lot of companies. Out. Yeah. There's not wow. a lot of companies going to these events. Some of the big companies, the companies that had the massive boost aren't going to be there. So this is not going to be the same GIE that you guys see every single year. It's not back in full swing, but it's at least back. And this is the exactly. first step to gaining traction to get back to right. Yes. Yes. hundred percent agree. And, and, you know, companies are leery. They don't want to expose their employees. They don't want to take that liability. Uh, and th they just want to keep everybody safe. But, uh, like I said, glad it is happening. So, uh, you know, looking and, forward to seeing you up there, man. You well, know? we've got a special event going on too, where we get to meet everybody that wants to attend. So we're going to be doing a meet and greet. Oh, yeah. I think it's, I think it's at, where is that at Eric? Is it at Marriott? I believe the Marriott yeah. is downtown yeah. Louisville. Downtown Marriott, uh, Wednesday night, uh, six o'clock. So six to yeah. nine o'clock. Yeah. And I think we've got limited seating and they're giving away free food as well. This exactly. is going to be, dude, this yeah. is going to be a big thing, man. We've got the guests that we've got lined up, Blake Albertson, Sean oh, yeah. Spencer, Savannah Spencer, Caleb, and Brittany Almond, and we got you, and I'll be yeah. hosting this event. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to allow, it's completely free, 150 people to come in and pick our brains. To yeah. basically, we're going to have a whole panel, and we're going to be talking green industry. We're going to be talking new innovation. We're going to be talking about problems that are inside of the industry. Now, it's going to be like a giant think tank session for anybody and everybody that wants to come. Well, everybody up to 150 people, because we only got so much food yeah. and we only got so much space. <laughs> <Room>. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. 
but it's going to be, it's going to be huge. I've seen these things fill out rooms really, really fast. Quick. So oh, yeah. if these guys listening want to join that free event, just you got to get on board and you got to get on board fast. Yes. Yes. And you know, you know, the, the camaraderie, the, the hanging out after the, the panelist event is, is what's going to be fun. That way, you know, you can network one-on-one -on -one with, uh, other contractors. And I did get a text message in, uh, and, and the question's for you, Stanley. And it mm -hmm. says, what, what is your favorite beverage at events like that? Is it water? Is it coffee? Oh, do, do you like to have a cold beer? You seriously want to know? You seriously <laughs> want to know? This is going to be really, really, really embarrassing, but I've got four kids and two grandkids. So yeah. I learned that when I just, we all just drink kitty cocktails, Shirley yeah. Temples. That's a Sprite with grenadine in it because it's full of sugar and I am a sugar fiend. I can't get enough sugar. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I crave that stuff. So I'll drink like three or four of them and everybody's like, oh, you want a vodka? I'm like, no, take a Shirley Temple. <laughs> and I always say, I always whisper and I'm like, and then I'm like trying to be more manly. I'll take a little Sprite, but can you add a little grenadine in there? And the waiter's always got to go, oh, you want a Shirley Temple? <laughs> where, where we're from, it's called a kitty cocktail. So yes, that's embarrassing, but it's the honest that's to God truth. Well, if you listen to the show, we're always joking with each other about drinking White Claws. So <laughs> That's we're worse, in the same dude. boat. That's worse. <laughs> oh, so isn't, that, isn't White Claw like the Zima from the 1990s, I, right? Probably so. Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but like you said, you can you can drink quite a few of them and not feel the effects. It's, it's a, it's right. And you don't even effect. recognize when your man card gets taken away. either. <laughs> Do you have the umbrella in the shirt? <laughs> well, sometimes they put that in there. Yeah, I'll just, I proudly sport it. I got to say. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, good stuff, man. Good stuff. So what have you been working on lately, man? You know, I saw you said uh, you've been doing some videos and stuff and I guess traveling and around. I've seen that you have been at some other trade shows based on your Instagram page. So, yeah, you know, our business is in high gear, but we're having a lot of issues, right? Yeah. Um, you know, there's just because I run a business and I'm on YouTube does not mean I'm perfect by any means. And I never claim to be. I am a contractor that struggles with the day to day grinds, just like everybody else. And we got a crew out building a retaining wall, monster retaining wall, 14 foot high. It was supposed to take four to five weeks. We're looking at eight weeks and we finally wrapped it up. But we also had a lot of change orders during that time. But what happens is that throws every single job after that off. I mean, oh, we, yeah. we're, we're about a month behind. And yeah, the change orders can justify the extra time. But how do you relate that message to the next customer in line exactly. that's, that's pissed off at yeah. you? It's yeah. like, where are you? And here's what I here's how I approach that. When I get these customers that are ornery with me, I just say I say to them, here's the way we operate. We will never leave a job until it's complete. And that means we will never walk off your job and come back later. We will stay there till that job is done, no matter what. Oh, yeah. And that shuts a lot of them up. And the ones that it doesn't shut up, you know, you're in for a ride when you get to their job anyway, because you probably should have never took that took job. <laughs> Uh, the customer we we always regret right oh, <laughs> they may have a big checkbook but they they uh, they make you earn every penny of it with all the it's not worth it have you, had, have you had any of those this year yet um well yes and, and in our maintenance side uh i really get bombarded from one company uh they're real particular on their properties and it's you know they expect us there every day and I'm like, you know, McNair, I can't be there every single day. You know, it's like, can you drive by there and take a picture? You know, we had a, we had a, we had a customer complain that there was water crossing the sidewalk, you know, uh, it's washed a little bit of mulch out onto the sidewalk. I mean, it's just stuff like that all the time, but you know, they pay well. And so it, it's, it's one of those things. Do you, do you walk away from it? Or, you know, are you able to recoup that money back in other ways and, and make them happy? Uh, or, because, or you put into your contract, any ad additional uh, site visits will cost you $150 per site visit. 
and gladly slow go, it down. Yeah. And, and then gladly go and then $150 per hour. So it's a, automatically a $300 bill minimum. We will I'll gladly go take that picture for you. And then you give them the $300 bill and say, here's your picture and here's your bill for $300. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, they, I don't know, I guess I spoiled them up front. So they kind of expect me uh, to always, uh, to always do that. So. Uh, but- I, hey, we're in the same boat. We've got a customer like that. And we've got a crew where when we switch the crew up, so like if we have our mowing crew go out and we put one different person on there, yeah, they, they will call like like Nazis. I mean, they're like, <laughs> oh my God, that guy turned 180 degrees and it, there, there's a little bit of turf damage and it's like, uh, it grows back. And it's yeah. like a little tiny, you know, you, just the mo- most smallest minutia. Yes. That you can think of, they love to call about, and, and that's because you spoil them up front. But sometimes that's what you got to do to get your foot in the door, right? Exactly. You got to give them that extra service. Some of them need that attention. They do. A lot of companies do need that attention. They do, but that's how business is won is it by is. being the guy that's willing to step up and to do that. But you also have to temper that, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and I don't know, it's, it's one of those things that you're excited that you have the opportunity to work for that client because you know that it's going to be profitable. You know that it's going to be a good job. It's going to look good in your portfolio. And then you're like, wow, why did I even take it? Is it worth that extra money? Is it worth making that profit uh, with the stuff? But like you said, you've got to charge for it, you know, do the site visit charge, uh, let them know up front. Uh, you know, we're here. We will, we will come, but it will cost you. So yeah, yes. Yep. Exactly. Time is the most valuable thing that we have, isn't it? My brother. Yes, it is, sir. Yes, it is. <laughs> I just wish we had a 36 hour day instead of 24. You know, we'd fill them up and every it's guy, good. every guy listening would just fill them hours yeah. up. So at some point, you know, that's a great, what you, what you just said, We've got to limit our hours of operation for our own sanity and for the sake of our families, yes. right? I mean, because yeah. guys like you and guys like me, we will work until there's no no time left. Like when my wife goes on vacation, I put a 70, 80 hour work weekend. Just It's just like, boom, I'm actually like, oh, I get to work all day and night. And I'm cool with that, <laughs> right? She's on yeah. vacation. I'm like, oh my God, I can work till 11, 12 at night and not have to leave and I can keep going. <laughs> and it's like- yes. I love I love it, man. I love it. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. That's not quite right. Okay. <laughs> so at some point for the sake of your families, you guys limit, and I'll say this, and I've actually told people in my organization, you are not allowed to work on Sundays. If you work with me, do not do anything on a Sunday. I don't care what it is. Sunday is the day off. It was yes. meant to be the day off. Take that day off because you're going to come to work on Monday way more productive. And one thing that I learned, Eric, is one day off is never enough during the week. I just, I I don't believe it is. I think the average guy really needs two days off to really recover, right? To to de-stress and to come in happier on Monday. So I don't, my guys love to work and a lot of them will try to take on little side gigs on Saturday. And all they're doing is burning themselves out for me. For me, on Monday, where they where their productivity affects the entire company and helps everybody do better. I mean, exactly. it's a it's a really important thing. This work life balance, you gotta have the balance to be the most productive in the work part of your life. Yes, and that means taking the time off for yourself. And you guys, this is the only way to justify it. Is I will be a better person. I will be more productive when I take that time off and force yourself to relax. You gotta, you gotta do it. But it's hard and it's hard for contractors. Just like you said, you get excited when your wife goes on vacation. You know, there's a week in the summer that my wife does go to the beach with, with her parents. I may get to go for one or two days and I come back, but like you said, it's, it's an opportunity to work to midnight and not make anyone mad. 
it's <laughs> <laughs> and it's like yes <laughs> you know <laughs> so you're the same way yes and most <laughs> most guys you know in in the women they're like what is what is he doing why is he so excited to, <laughs> for us to leave it's like because we can work <laughs> it's not so we can be bad boys it's so we can be good boys and stay in the office a lot longer uh, I, I don't know but they, that's they'll never understand it that's an also an indicator when your work becomes fun. And that is the entrepreneurial mindset. When you are excited about what you're doing. Oh, yes. That's going to pay dividends down the road because this is we, we work like it's a sprint, but mm -hmm. we're in it for the marathon. We will just go, go, go and get up the next day and go, go, go and yes. do it day after day after day because we're so enthusiastic about what we're doing because we enjoy it. We have a passion for what we're doing. And sometimes when you take that time off, you got to appreciate that we have that. How many guys, Eric, go to a freaking office and sit and, under stupid fluorescent lights and they're like, eh, I got to type on my keyboard all day long. Yes. We're guys like us. We're out in the field. We're going to create something new. We're going to run something. We're going to fire up a piece of equipment. Something is going to break down. And yes. you're, you're going to be like, that sucks. But wait a minute. It's different than it was yesterday. Yes. Every single day is a blessing. It's different in some different way, shape, or form. And there's so many people stuck in the routine that they are legitimately trapped within their own jobs. Yes. They, are, they are slowly rotting away in a hell that they have created on their own. For themselves, for themselves. Yes. To yes. pay for a house with extra rooms that they never use. Oh and, my gosh, yes. Yes. And they look out the window when we pull up in our trucks with the lawnmowers and they're envious. Yes. They, they are. are envious of the guys riding that shiny new mower in that shiny new truck who's out there smiling with his headphones on, yep. listening to Turf's Up Radio or listening to their favorite <laughs> podcast. They're envious. <laughs> yes, so. they are. They, we got it good, man. And everybody does need to count their blessings. And, you know, we get envious of their big, giant houses. But I'll tell you right now, I've seen a lot of guys make a lot of money and have no more happiness than me. I've seen a lot of guys make a lot of money and end up in really bad situations. Oh, really yeah. Bad, re really bad personal situations with issues. And ha there's, money does not create happiness. Ooh, it Lord, it no. has nothing to do with it. Like right now, your happiness is dependent upon what you guys can learn to appreciate where you are at right now. What are the good things you have? Exactly. Exactly. And guys, we're going to talk more about this here in just a moment. We've got Stanley, the dirt monkey with us here, and we are going to take a short break here in just a moment. I mean, good stuff going on there, my friend. Thank you so much for bringing your expertise here to the show. Eric, the turf teacher Jones. Teaching you life lessons, business strategies, and leadership. Let's grow together. If you're needing irrigation, landscape, or pesticide credits, check out my website at turfteacher.com. Every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., we host Turf Talk Tuesday for pesticide credits and have online courses for both irrigation and landscape contractors. There are also several opportunities to get your credits at one of our seminars that we do throughout the southeastern United States and information on our Christmas lighting course. Check it out again at turfteacher.com. Stanley, yes, sir. with that work-life balance, give us give us some pointers on how we can actually have a work-life balance. I know you and Blake Albertson did a podcast on that uh, a few months back, and what were some good pointers from that that the contractors can actually take? Because we we get so involved with our work, and it's not until the spouse calls you and says, "Hey, you're going to miss." your son's ball game. If you don't get here, you're going to miss your daughter's recital. You got 30 minutes, get here and let's go. So what, what's one, what's one good thing they can actually use to help them balance that time. Self 
awareness. And I think this is where a lot of us fail because it's that's one of the most difficult challenges is we don't realize just how involved we become in our work and how that detracts from our actual life. And a lot of times with, when you're becoming self-aware, you've also got to set your own limitations. You got to find out what you're good at, but you also got to realize what you're bad at and fill those gaps in because you need to complete the entire picture to be successful, right? And what I mean is inside of your own organization, you got to find people that balance out your deficiencies, okay? So with me, I'm, I am my wear my feelings right on my sleeve. So I'm a very animated person. So when I'm at work, I'm the same way that I am right now, right? And what I find is sometimes that's a little bit overwhelming, especially when I'm dealing with customers or there's an issue because I become very emotionally involved in their project as well. And so a lot of times I have to step away. So if there's a problem on a job, like we just did a massive project and this was a different one where, not the one where we went overboard on, you know, over time on, but this is a different project where we had some deficiencies in the actual material that we were using. So some problems with the material and they were very minor problems because they were actually within spec, but they weren't minor to the customer that was forking out lots of money for this job. And what was happening is the customer was calling out things that really shouldn't have been issues. Now, I realized what was happening. They were kind of being nitpicky. And yeah. you can start to sense when a customer, that they're all excited to get you in the door. But once they got you there, they start to want free things. And they start to try to figure out, I mean, and every customer is going to ask, oh, can you throw this in? Or can you throw that in? And your answer should always be no. Yes. Right? You're right, you guys, because yeah. the customer is always going to ask you to do extra things, but not charge for them. And this is where you're going to find at the end of the year, it comes to bite you in the butt. Because when you give away your free services, you're not accounting for the overhead that you need to compensate for to take into the calculations on the bid. And if I'm talking too fast there, you know, just slow me down and back yeah. me up a little bit. Okay. So I've got a customer asking for free services and then they start to pick on little details. And sometimes you, you just want to punch them in the face, right? <laughs> I mean, let's be real. We're contractors and you're like, oh my God, oh my, how can this even be an issue? Look at, look at what we created for you. Look at what we've done for you. And it's by becoming self-aware and realizing that I'm not the person at this point to interact with it, I hand the baton off to somebody that's more patient. I hand the baton off to somebody that can deal with customers. So I actually have the balance to me is Tim. He's legitimately the antithesis of me and yeah. Blaine. These are very calm guys. These are very cool guys. These are very, these are guys that still care about the project and care about the customer, but in a completely different way. And so that helps me to step away from the issue, hand it off to somebody else and maintain my own sanity instead of fighting it all the way through to the end. Yes. Because I know my personality is not going to get through to this customer. <laughs> Hand it off to somebody <laughs> whose personality will get through to the customer. And that's where becoming self-aware helps you to maintain your work-life balance. Because when you go home, you can actually still have a family life. Because how many times, Eric, has your job come home with you? Because you oh, can't every, let it go. Yeah, every day. And even, even on a day off, like you're saying, on a Sunday afternoon, what am I thinking about 24-7? Monday morning. That's the problem, dude. That's the problem. It's, and, and it's not, it's not that I'm mad at it. It's like, I love it. It's yeah. like, I, I want Monday morning to hurry up and get here. I, I, I feel like I get to wake up and, and put my Jersey on when I go to work. So what it, is wrong? If you don't feel that way, what's going on in your world, Eric, if you don't feel like you're excited about work on Monday, well, which is very rare, but if I don't feel excited about a Monday morning, it's probably because, you know, we're dealing with an issue with one of the kids uh, or, you know, my, my wife is a little upset that she can sense that I'm thinking about work and that my head is not, you know, fully into the family thing. Um, and I do, I, I feel bad about that, but I I've told her time and time again, I was like, sweetie, you know, this is what I live, sleep, breathe, you know, the whole nine yards, this, this, the green industry is me, whether I'm teaching, whether I'm doing a webinar, whether I'm online teaching a class, uh, whether I'm on turfs up radio, wherever I'm at, wherever I'm at, I'm always thinking about, you know, the next thing that, uh, 
that I, that I want to get done, not that I need to get done. And so, okay. So is there ever a time though, when you're not looking forward to going to work because the way your work is going, isn't there times when you're just not interested in, I mean, you're just, something is up at work and you just, you don't have that spark. You don't have that enthusiasm for it anymore. Uh, yeah. Once in a while, uh, once in a while, uh, but they're, they're far few in between maybe here at the college, you know, teaching, uh, with just a lot of the political stuff that goes on here. Uh, you know, I love students. I love young people wanting to get into, you know, the trades. Uh, but when it gets down to the political sense and some of the, the paperwork that's associated with teaching, that can get mind boggling and, and, and something that I would dread, but, uh, you know, getting up and, and, you know, if I actually get to go and, and ride a mower all day, because there are days that I'm just like, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be on a mowing crew all day, put me on my mower. I'll run the weed eater, you know, whatever I need to do. And those are days that I can kind of blow off some, you know, mental steam that I need to, I can Mm -hmm. get rid of that paperwork that's inside my head when I go and actually do the physical work. So, yes, yes. So you've got to find an outlet. So there's going to be times when I, I think that no matter who you are, no matter how much you love your work, something's going to happen at work. That's going to drive you nuts and make you not like work. And if that continues to happen every single day, then there's something that you've got to change at work. And you said it in the beginning of the show, the most valuable thing we have is not money, but it's time. And we only have so many years that we get to work to we're done working. So why are we going to spend those hours, those years being miserable? We as contractors, have choices that we can make. We can be on a mowing crew or we can, if we're not enjoying that, making long grass short, we can switch it up and we can start to look and add services and change things up and keep our own lives amazing because that's the most valuable thing we have is our time. Why not spend it being happy? And so these guys need to take a self-assessment. Am I enjoying what am I, what I'm doing? And if I'm not, what are the things that are making me not enjoy it? And let's just change those. Maybe I don't enjoy mowing anymore. Well, what can I do with my skills? You're always, guys, we're contractors. We're always taking two steps forward. Mm -hmm. And yeah, maybe we got to take a step backward so we can go down a different path to take more steps forward, but on a route and a path that makes us happier. Yeah. And it's it, 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 like you just said, we, we have the different things to do. Um, we, we bought a truck uh, for Logan a couple of weeks ago from a fellow landscaper mm-hmm. and we were talking about work and he's like, and he's a little bit younger than me. And he said, Eric, I'm just, I'm ready to get out of it. And I'm like, dude, you're, you're, you're younger than me. You shouldn't be burnt out. But what it is, he mows grass till dark every day. He comes home, he does the bill and the invoice and, and he's working in the business, not on it. So he's, he's trying to still grow his company, but he's not allowing himself the time needed to do that because he's always working. I'm like, maybe this is the time that you hire somebody to, to help you do this. It might be a little uh, tight money wise up front, paying that salaried person to help you get this done. But you know, in the long run, I think you're going to be a lot happier and you're not going to want to get out of the green industry. Like he's ready to, to just exit. And I'm like, you're too young for that. Okay, so he's ready to exit. And since he's ready to exit, why not completely change everything up? What have you got to lose? You're ready to quit anyway, right? I was ready to exit back in 2007. I was just spurned out. We were doing millions of dollars every year and it just, life sucked. And I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna exit. I'm gonna make a major dramatic move. I'm going to intentionally cut our workload in half. And I said this to my main guys and they all looked at me like I was nuts. They did. And I'm like, look, I've got nothing to lose. I hate this business. I hate what I'm doing. I hate managing all of these guys. There's nothing I am, I'm enjoying about this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be, we're done. I quit every commercial account I had. We were a commercial retaining wall installer and commercial excavation contractor. And I says, we're not doing that anymore. We're only doing private residential jobs. And I'm going to get rid of all of the guys that kind of suck. You guys are fired. You're 
<laughs> you make me miserable. You're done. <laughs> you're out. I don't need you. And I kept yeah. all of my best guys. And I said, you guys, you run your job sites. I'm not running your job sites anymore. And our workload went from millions, $2 million plus dollars a year down, I think 750,000 the next year. And our profits stayed exactly the same. And yeah. at the end of the year, Eric, I'm just going, wait a minute, I'm a lot happier. Yeah. I, I made the same amount of money and I have more time and less hassle. So maybe if you get to the point where you're ready to throw the towel in, before you throw that towel in, switch things up, try yeah. something different, give yourself a chance to complete your dream, right? Because yeah. you started this with this passion, get back to what it, what it takes to make you feel that again. Don't yeah. give up on yourself. Exactly. And, and, and a lot of these guys just need to hear that. They probably need some, some coaching or some advice, but the problem is they're working 24 hours a day. They don't have a chance to listen to you. They don't have a chance to listen to the radio turf up radio because they're, they're working all the time. And uh, I wish there was a way to, uh, to get to these guys and, and let them understand that, that they don't have to keep doing it. But you know what, Stanley, these same guys are also the ones that's never heard of the GIE. And that blows my mind. There are still people out there in the green industry who have only heard about it for the past few months or still, I'm like, you go into the GIE. Well, what's the GIE? And I'm like, you, how long have you been in the green industry? And they don't know what it is, but that's, they're not connected. That's not, a, that's not a bad thing though, Eric. These are guys that have their nose to the grindstone, man. True. These are guys that are busting their butt. I mean, they, they're legitimately like the bull, man. They put their head down, they put the yoke Charge. on their shoulders and they move forward and they got to wait to pull and nothing is going to br break their vision to get them to where they got to go. Yes. Right. And, yeah. and so like going back to your friend, what I would say to your friend before he dumps everything, hire some people. What are you going to lose? You're already barely scraping by if you're put if you're putting all these hours in. And what happens when he hires someone to go on his mowing crew and take that over and he hires someone to take over his paperwork, he's going to sit back and go, crap, I've hired away all this stuff. What am I going to do now? And what's going to happen is, is for the average guy, they're not going to be able to turn their mind off. They're an entrepreneur. They're driven. They're motivated. Their mind is now free. And what's yeah. going to happen when their mind is free? It's their most dangerous weapon. It's their most powerful thing in their arsenal. Their mind is going to go, wait a minute. What if I charge an extra $3 on this account per hour? What if I did this? Or what if I did that? And they start having fun again. They start experimenting. They fire a customer. They hire a new customer. They bring in a new piece of equipment. They start to get the energy back into their company. And when you stop worrying about the money, it's going to start flowing in. When you start enjoying your work, the money is going to follow. Your yep, guys right. are going to enjoy what you're doing. Your whole life is going to get switched around. So don't be afraid to make these dramatic moves, but always look at where you're going so that you know you're doing the right thing for yourself and for your family. Exactly. Good advice from Stanley the Dirt Monkey. Man, I, that's why I love having you on the show, man. You just put everything in perspective for each and every one of us. And so thank you for that, brother. Well, thanks for having me on, man. I, yeah. I love sharing with these guys. I just love giving it all away, man. That's, that's the way, man. I, I, it's the way I was raised. It's the way I'll always be, dude. Exactly. Exactly. And like you said, you know, when we talked yesterday, you said that uh, uh, you had to get your son to school this morning, oh. which is a good thing. That is why I like being that entrepreneur because I can, I can go to the school during the middle of the day if I want to. Mm -hmm. And watch my kids recital to go and watch their swim meets in the afternoon, because I know I'm going to be working when I get home after they're in the bed asleep. Yeah. So my yeah. time, I can, I can balance that time and make sure that I do hit all of those special events that mean the world to the kids. They, they don't care if I'm setting up at midnight on the computer, they're <laughs> asleep. <laughs> so I'm not missing anything there. So. Uh, well, man, good. I don't, you know, you are, uh, you know, uh, more than welcome if you need to leave and go ahead and take your son to school or we can chat a few more minutes, but we are going to have to take a, a quick commercial break. So it's totally up to you, my friend. I can stick around for a bit longer, Eric. 
All right. Good deal, man. Well, let me go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead to break and uh, we'll be right back here and we'll wrap it up with Stanley, the dirt monkey for more landscape business expert advice, check out go lmn.com forward slash blog. And once again, a massive shout out to LMN software for sponsoring this podcast and making it all happen. LMN is the most comprehensive landscape business management software in the industry from budgeting, estimating, customer relationship management, time tracking, and so much more. It's the true do-it-all tool for your landscape business and provides a platform to scale your company to the next level. And the best part about LMN is that they have a free version, which you can use today if you choose to. Just visit golmn.com forward slash free to learn more and start taking advantage of the software that's helped me grow my business into a successful, sustainable, and profitable company. That's golmn.com forward slash free. And thanks again, everyone. And I'll see you in the next lecture. Man, how glad, how glad am I to say that the GIE is no longer next month, but this month. So how about you, Stanley? Are you, are you ready to get up there? It's not, it's not that far of a drive for you, is it? No, I'm, it's about a 10 hour drive. Oh, wow. Hour drive. Yeah. yeah. So I'm you guys Minnesota. flying or are you driving? Uh, I'll be flying in because I got to cut it short this year. Unfortunately, gotcha. I can't stay for the whole event because then there's, I don't know why they plan all these really cool events at the same time, because then right after that or during that is the national hardware show. Okay. And the, and the national hardware show, the reason I get excited about that show is simply because they got all these new inventors, all these young guys coming in with cool stuff. And what happens with these young guys, I mean, I, I just love and appreciate it because this is something that I think all of us need to keep our eyes open to is when we're inside of this green industry, there's all of these ways to make our jobs better, our lives better, new tools, new gear, new equipment. And that's where I think a lot of the new millionaires are going to be made is guys that actually take the time to take their idea to the next level. And at the National Hardware Show, they actually have the new inventors aisle. And that's where I aim right for that. Wow. And I, and when I go there, I get to meet guys that make the next best post hole digger there. I remember it from years ago, some kid made a post hole digger that was phenomenal. I was just like, holy yeah. crap. But the, <laughs> but the problem is, is these younger inventors, or, you know, I, mean, I say young inventors, I don't mean like young in age, but they're just new to the game. Yeah. What happens is they want to get in Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards or one of the big box stores, not realizing that that's going to be the death of them, the death of yeah. their company, the death of their dreams, because the big box stores, they don't care about the little guys. They yeah. care about the big box store. Yep. And they'll put in an order for way too much that somebody can't technically handle. And then whatever problems are with the tools, the return policy is just 100%. Like yeah. if, if somebody's out there and they use it for three weeks and then they break it, somebody will return it. Well, guess what? That's the dude that's paying the price for that. Yes. Right. Yes. And, yep. and people are OK doing that. They think they're returning it to Menards. But really what they're doing is they're actually taking the money out of the guy that actually is struggling to get by in the first place. Yeah. Right. And so yep. we, we just got to be, you know, I, I love these guys. I love what they're doing, but I also want them to be careful and aware of what they're getting into and to, to make those baby steps, but to also at least to keep making those baby steps moving forward. So that, that's why I'm heading out to check that show out at this. And it's at the same time. So I'll spend two days at GIE and the rest at the national hardware show. So what are you going, you going to fly in like Wednesday morning or Tuesday night? I'm flying into the GIE uh, Tuesday night. Uh, I'm going to be spending the day Wednesday uh, all day at the GIE. Then Thursday all day I'm going to do the event. And then I got to find a flight out Thursday night uh, into Vegas to go hit the hardware show Friday morning. And I'll be working the hardware show all day Friday, all day Saturday, and then flying out on Sunday so I can get home so I can be mowing on Monday. Gotcha. <laughs> Hey, one question uh, for you. Are they going to have Connex this year? No, Connex is every three years, right? It's every three. Oh, okay. I thought it was every two. I thought it was every two, but it's every three. Okay. It's every, it going to be next time. I don't, I don't know. I, last Connex, I, I was not overly impressed with it. Really? I, okay. I, I think the GIE actually gives you better demonstrations. Okay. Um, you know, and of course the Connex, I think it, it was also a, uh, uh, suffering from COVID-19 during that yeah. time. Oh, too. Yeah. So, so yeah, there was some drawbacks too. I mean, it was a great show for construction guys. Yeah. As I mean, you know, heavy equipment guys. Yeah. But, 
Um, I think that uh, if you miss it, there's other ways to get that same information that's out there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah. Last time when they had it, it and do they do it every single, every time in Vegas or do they move it around? Uh, well, I've only been to two of them. Okay. So both of them were in Vegas. So okay. where they're heading, I know the one that they do move around is Sima, not SEMA. SEMA is the, the car show. Mm-hmm. Sima is the snow and ice management. Now that one moved around and there was three different, uh, three Dude. different yeah locations throughout the year okay so if these guys are snow fighters there was some cool stuff it was a small show but holy crap there was some new innovations there just some really cool stuff and uh, yeah i could see where a lot of guys would miss it because when i went and attended there weren't a lot of people at the show i mean it was it was tiny yeah but but the amount of really cool stuff there, there was pretty enormous. So I made a video on that. So these guys, what I try to do is I try to go to the shows. I try to do a highlight reel of all the stuff because it's tough to get to all these different shows and to see everything. So if these guys do want to see that, that's why I go to these shows and cover them because I mean, I love covering these shows and I love sharing what I'm, I'm finding at these. Yeah. Shows. Now, do you take a, do you take a videographer with you or are you mainly just doing this selfie style? Selfie style. Yeah. I mean, I take two cameras, so one's on a tripod and one is in my hand. And so I'll set both cameras up and I, you know, everything, I try to keep it short and sweet and try to get the information without trying to kill it to death so that, you know, we can cover a lot of ground real fast. Gotcha. What, what, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, what cameras do you use? GoPro seven. Everybody asks that. What camera do you use? GoPro hero seven in 4k. Okay. And the, re- the reason is it's a cheap camera. I mean, I just had everything stolen out of my truck in the front of my driveway while I'm loading my truck. I can't be- can't make this wow. crap up, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> That's, but hey, isn't that the blessing of living in St. Paul, Minnesota, right? I mean, the big city, you get stuff stolen. They stole our mail. They stole I'm loaded. I put it, put my backpack in there and they stole all my GoPros. So wow. I, en- I ended up buying a GoPro 10. So I'm trying that out. I have, I had a bunch of GoPro eights, wasn't happy with them. So I stuck with the sevens because they're tried and true, a simple camera that works every time, not a lot of bells and whistles on them, but they get the job done. So yeah. kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Right. Yeah. So you're, you, and so you're doing one selfie style with the GoPro and then you've got one on a tripod. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. I, and I find that uh, you got to always keep a, that backup camera, even if you're only using one because the GoPro sevens heat up and burn out. Yeah. And they'll sometimes fry out all of your information. I mean, that's one of the detriments of them. They just overheat, especially if you're in Vegas. I lost, I lost half a con expo because of a bad GoPro seven. Wow. Yeah. Half a con expo. It was just one of those things, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. And that, uh, you know, you put all that work into it and then you, you realize you've lost it. It's uh, it's not a good day. Is it? Oh, dude. And the, or it gets stolen. I mean, cause like I said, I had all my stuff get stolen here just two, yeah, I think a week and a half ago Yeah, and I had footage in there. So yeah, I mean, it's just like anything else. I'm, I, you're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days, but what's the lesson you learn from the bad days, right? I mean, those, those are the best days with typ- yeah. typically your, your worst day is typically your best day in hindsight, because it's the day you remember. It's the day where things pivot. It's the day where things change. It's the day where you go, oh, crap, I now have to do something different. And it forces you into action. Yes. And that that's where you take the new path that can lead you to bigger and better things down the road. It's, it's paying for your education, right? I mean, yeah. you yeah. know, the worst, the worst mistake you make is the most expensive education you've ever learned. You won't make it again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Change things up. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Good stuff, man. Awesome. 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 So what do you got planned the rest of the day, man? Oh, today is it's, they're awful. I mean, Eric, what, what, what do I say? I mean, every day is from morning till night filled up. So I yeah. just take it one day at a time or one hour at a time. So, yeah. But I think today's going to be a paperwork day, sitting in an office, pounding the keyboard, doing what I got to do. You got to get them out of the way. You just got to do those days. Yes. And, you know, is is it for you maybe one day a week that you spend paperwork or, uh, or do you break it up over a couple of days? 
Well, it's usually two to three days per week that I'm in the office. And then the other four days, I'm actually out in the field working. Got you. Well, good deal, man. Well, you know, at the GIE, you'll, you'll meet my wife. She's coming with us for the first time. So she keeps hearing all this hype. Uh, so I, I hope it doesn't let her down. You said that, you know, there's not going to be some of the bigger vendors there, but, uh, uh, you know, she's, she's really excited about, uh, you know, I, all the I, excitement. I brought my wife one year because she was like, what, what, what do you mean you go to these events and you're, you're tired afterward? Well, I, I don't get it. And, and, you know, so I'm like, you know what you're coming with. And then I brought a couple of my business partners that were the same way. Yeah. And at the end of the first day, we were sitting down eating dinner in a restaurant. It was like 11 o'clock at night. And that was when the day ended for me. Yeah. And I had had these guys come along through the whole day and I looked at them and they all looked like zombies. They looked like they've been pulled through a keyhole. They're just sitting around going, <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, first day is done. Three more to go. <laughs> yeah, they they just don't understand how many miles you walk, do they? <laughs> oh well, my I, goodness! One, you know, all of our phones have a built-in step counter. We don't need these fancy gadgets, right? Because yeah. every iPhone out there has one. And I just so I opened it up, and I'm like, twenty-four thousand steps. That was what the average day did. So, twenty-four thousand. Wow. Yep. 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 <laughs> All right, Eric. All right, buddy. Well, you have a blessed day, man. Thank you so much for joining us here, man. We love you, and I can't wait to see you in a couple weeks at the GIE. See you then, buddy. Thanks for having me on, man. All right. And that wraps up this episode of the Podscape. Thank you so much for joining us here, guys. I love each and every one of you. Life lessons and landscape lectures brought to you by the Turf Teacher and LMN Software. We'll see you in the next episode. Turf Teacher out.